the voice is Stop, says listen to your heart Every day's a brand new start Make decisions in your life That make great visions come to life so, hey everybody watching, my name is Gina Sims, I'm the founder of the Autism Theater Project, and today I'm talking to Cody Clark, who has submitted a story that has inspired the first episode of The Voice Inside, a brand new web series. What's, what's really wonderful about Cody's story, as well as the story of many people who are on the spectrum, is that when Cody was first diagnosed, which must have been in the, the 90s, early 90s, Correct around. I think I was born in 93, so probably 94, mid 94 is when I got diagnosed. And there are so many more limitations put on you than you have proven there to actually be. Indeed. Uh, the doctor said I never walk, talk, get married, have children, all that stuff that I'm doing right, right now for the most part. And talk about your journey in terms of going from a kid who was diagnosed with autism, who at first is very limited verbally to where you are now as a professional magician and autism advocate. Well, at the moment of diagnosis, all seemed lost, but what helped is uh, my parents being told to take me to the U of L autism center. The university of Louisville has a pretty good speech and occupational therapy program, which is where I learned my therapies from Rose Geis and Scott Tomchek, my two therapists. And uh, first they focused on the verbal. They got me saying my first words around uh, three and a half. Then just in the nick of time to enter kindergarten, I was able to speak full sentences. And then when I was able to actually really communicate publicly, that's when they turned to the occupational therapies so I could learn to manage my motor skills as much as possible so I could do the tasks I needed to do in school. So I think one thing that really helped was getting put in therapies right away so that no time was wasted. And also the fact that things worked out to where I could be mainstreamed while uh, receiving help at the same time allowed me to gain those social skills that are hard to gain when you're separated from the majority of your classmates. When throughout your childhood did you feel like you had reached a point where you felt like you, you had a lot more independence and you felt like your social skills had really improved. And tell me, what was that like for you personally? I'd say the re toward the end of elementary, toward the end of middle, toward the end of high, because at the first portion of all those, I had to catch up my social skills. I kind of mentioned how I did learn to talk in the first place, much less manage the social dynamics of elementary school. Then I went into middle school, whole different social dynamics. I started get, getting bullied for liking school. Middle school is when you're at the age where you're not supposed to like school. So I had to learn those social dynamics. Then by eighth grade, I had my friends. I figured out uh, how to navigate uh, that world. Then high school, thankfully, is the least, uh, the least intensive of those transitions. But there was still a transition where I had to learn the new rules of the game. So that uh, by the time I was a junior and senior, I had my friends, I got known at the, as the school magician, I had my social clout that way, and I felt really independent then. So essentially, I learned for periods of time first, then I gain independence, then I need to learn again, then I get more independence. Awesome. Uh, that's something I could relate to, too. The end of middle school, end of high school, end of college, I felt like... Okay, now I know what I'm doing, you know? Yeah, but it's um, important for your viewers to know independence isn't just one moment, but a bunch of many moments where you slightly become more independent. Mm-hmm, definitely. Challenges never end in life, and that's one of the biggest lessons we all can learn is to embrace the challenges rather than wanting to not have any. Yes, and I think your attitude and the attitude that your parents had based off of our conversations is something that is so important for people to hear as it relates to overcoming challenges when uh, you have a certain condition. Well, my parents did have a pretty progressive attitude about raising an autistic kid, especially for the 90s when we did have Rain Man as an example, but not much else beyond that. 
I like that my parents uh, didn't necessarily believe the initial limitations. They were like, might as well give Cody a chance to see how well Co- he can do amongst his uh, peers. The, their philosophy is the one I take with me when I do transition planning talks. I, I essentially, essentially don't change the person, but instead give them the tools to really be themselves. They did not try to change my autism, but they found the therapies needed so I could express myself. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's, that's really important for a lot of people to hear. And we talk about transition planning. Does that relate to your work as an autism advocate and somebody who helps people on the spectrum go from being teens to, to being young adults? Exactly. It's become a newly emerging area of the disabilities community is handling this transition to adulthood because so many of the services have been focused on kids, but a big portion of my generation that got diagnosed in the 90s is now experiencing adulthood. So a lot of the institutions are finally catching up to that and developing these new services to ease that transition. That is so important. And that that concept of trying to help kids transition from adulthood is essentially what inspired the Autism Theater Project to start The Voice Inside and to focus on stories about people on the spectrum who are or were teens and young adults and how they handled situations. I've seen myself as as the sibling of somebody on the spectrum, how Uh, The support and the understanding tends to dwindle a bit as the kids get older. Do you remember personally experiencing that? You are right that uh, as uh, students with disabilities get older, the amount of services dwindle. For one, because like I said, there's still some catching up that needs to be done amongst the institutions that provide services. But also the dynamics of the services change. We need therapies that are more relevant to our adult needs. So so now we start to get into the area of self-advocacy. We have oftentimes uh, we have to request uh, these supports because uh, our parents, as awesome as they are, didn't necessarily think we needed extra help with that. So I think that's part of the challenge too is uh, one of the first uh, transition planning skills is self-advocacy for that reason. If we feel our needs are not being met, we need, we, the, the burden does seem to fall on us to be able to raise the issue, hey, can I have help here? Yeah, I think that's really important for teens and young adults to learn. So let's transition into talking about your driving story, which inspired the first episode of The Voice Inside. Well, driving is what I consider the first transition and the steps of transitioning to adulthood because you're essentially saying, I want to be independent enough to eventually have to be in this home right now if I, if I don't want to or have other things to do. So of course, that's going to occasionally cause you to butt heads with your parents who are realizing, hey, we're, the kid's growing up. Are they properly prepared? Uh, are they going to be made fun of for who they are in adulthood? So there was that natural friction there early, but to compound onto that, there are studies that show both rightfully and maybe a bit uh, wrongly that uh, autistic people have issues driving, mainly because of motor skills, coordination, and us taking rules literally, not being able to decipher uh, defensive driving. So my parents had lots of reasons to be extra worried. That first practice drive, I took a hard right into someone's yard because of the issues that were genuine, genuinely there. All was all right, but still that scared them enough to where uh, it took like about eight months before I stepped back behind the wheel again. And that wasn't my choice. That was them like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? And uh, I had to keep advocating, advocating. Eventually, they did find uh, Kentucky's vocational rehab office does provide driving instructors for free for disabled adults who want to learn how to drive. So that became our compromise that I would accept those lessons and I would get specially trained. And then when the time was right for me, I would uh, be able to drive just like I wanted to. And it took uh, until I think sophomore in college for it to work out, but I did pass the final test 
and driving when, when we aren't doing Zoom shows is a big part of my career now since I am a practicing professional magician and I travel for these talks too. Uh, that That is really awesome. That's really cool. I'm, I'm thinking right now about being 15, 16 years old around the time when you, you get your permit and you start thinking about driving. And I'm thinking about the amount of agency and um, confidence yeah. it takes to go out there and, and learn to do something that, like you said, is you know, a rite of passage growing up. Uh, even with the, your parents' doubts and fears and, and with some of society's doubts and fears about how your condition could limit you. You went out and you found the resources that you needed in order to make your dream happen. And I think that's just an awesome example for kids, all kids to, to look at. You know, yeah, Anytime you're self-advocating, you need to be mindful that there are multiple sides to the story, which is why I think I was that mindful that not, not everyone's not necessarily trying to attack you, but they have their own concerns and there's plenty of ways to compromise and meet in the middle. Do you have a moment in mind when your parents realize, okay, he's got this, he can drive? Uh, uh, after about two months with my special instructor, his name was Gordon. After about two months with no uh, bad reports, they started to feel more confident. And then was the moment I finally got my license and um, I think after my first two or three trips where I need to take the interstate went well. That's when they started to worry less and less and were checking in on me less and less because they knew I would probably be sick. That's awesome. That must have been so rewarding for them as parents. Oh, yeah. I, I can totally imagine that uh, it was given how intimately they saw the struggle for me to get to that point. Yeah. You just worked at it. That's the message of our first episode, your story, and essentially the voice inside is that, you know, in life, we all have our challenges. And if we have faith as a community in other people's ability to overcome their challenges, then we, allow, we give them the tools they need to put in the work and show that things are possible for them. You talk about your journey, going to college, becoming a magician, and then show us some of your act? I'd be happy to, Gina. Essentially, when I was 11, I got called up on stage during a magic show of all routines to put the blade and sawing a lady in half. And yes, the magician had their methods to make sure I did it without knowing how I did it. But that was nonetheless empowering. And that led me to feel, unlike the other things I tried, I could become good at magic with practice. So I joined the Louisville Magic Club, read the library books, and I eventually plugged in and uh, started finding ways to get gigs. And the gigs had just not stopped to the point where when I was in college, I actually got what I call the showbiz degree, marketing major, theater minor. Those dual credits uh, prepared me well to uh, be able to present well and to be able to figure out where my markets are to consistently have a clientele. Self-employment does have its own challenges, but it is a popular option for the disabilities community because of the flexibility it offers. I'm thinking about my sister who's on the spectrum and I'm thinking about her passions and how hearing your story inspires me to think about different ways my sister could take her passions and turn them into a self-employment opportunity. Like my sister has discovered during this pandemic that she loves to cook because we started cooking yeah. all the time since we don't go out. And I've been thinking about you know, how could she take cooking and turn it into a self-employment opportunity? So it's so awesome to hear your story about that and to hear about how you take your marketing knowledge yeah. and have developed your interpersonal skills and your communication skills yeah. in order to be able to run your own business. Yeah. And in Florida, there's an extra resource you all have. I've only been able to speak at their conferences since I'm being, I'm up here in Kentucky, but the Unicorn Children's Foundation actually focuses on, on entrepreneurship for the disabilities community. So they'll take the idea you give them uh, like cooking and they'll explore the avenues for you to be able to pursue that get angel funding and make your business plan. That's awesome. 
I didn't know that. You have a lot of resources. I'd like you to let people know where they can find you and get in contact with you. Well, my website is CodyClarkMagic.com. There you will find information on my general magic shows, my advocacy magic shows, and my transition planning talks for the disabilities community. If you like what you see on there, my email is info at CodyClarkMagic.com. That's where you can get in touch and uh, let me know about your event or even just to say that you're a fan. Uh, I or my secretary, Kate, will get back with you as soon as possible. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So Cody, what do you want to show us today? Well, first I'd like to start by saying that for many people, their first thoughts on autism tend to be a bit too uh, black and white for my tastes. People think we're either geniuses or failures. They think we're nonverbal or walking dictionaries who won't shut up. They think we're cold and unemotional or having meltdowns at Walmart. There's not much in between, only black and white. Until you viewers have a different way of thinking about autism then you'll see it's really a magical, colorful, and quite diverse spectrum full of some of the best people you will ever meet. And when I meet audiences like my viewers here, I also use my magic to share the importance of accepting differences. Because when we're used to something, we call it normal, we think we know how it looks and how it acts. So when something is odd, when something is different, it tends to stand out. When it stands out, it can even be scary. Until Gina, that difference is explained. Here, what just happened is because I have a red one and a yellow one secretly hidden in my left hand. I only ever showed you all this red one because Gina, the yellow one is here. Yes, Gina, the red one is here because the yellow one is here. And since the red one is here and the yellow one's hidden here, I can put the red one in here and turn it into yellow. That used to be scary, but now that I've explained this is happening because I have that secret red one hidden, next time the red one turns into yellow, it's not so scary anymore. Same with people. Not everyone has the same neurotype, the same skin color, the same cultural background that you do. And sometimes that can be different and scary at first. But the more you learn about these differences, the less scary they become, and the more new friends you make as well. Like the ones you make when you watch the Autism uh, Project videos. Okay, thank you, Cody. Of course, Gina. That's awesome. Very wise, I like how you tied magic to uh, our understandings of autism and, and humanity in general. Yeah, I try my best to uh, not just be uh, relevant to the autism community, but be relevant to the world too, to uh, take what messages I do micro for these groups and apply them macro to the situations of the world at large. Yeah. My big motto with uh, my career is that autism is nothing to be scared of, but a different way of thinking about the world. So go out and think differently. Go via the Voice Inside videos, and if you're a fellow self-advocate, submissions are open. Yes, yes, they are. So Awesome, great. Well, thank you so much, Cody. Have an awesome day. You too, Gina. Bye. The voice inside